In the coming weeks, I'm gonna be talking about editing. But before I talk about editing, I wanna talk about first drafts. But before we do that, I wanna talk about something that has a big impact on your first draft, whether you're an overwriter or an underwriter. This is yet another way that we divide the incredibly diverse group of people known as writers into two broad categories. But like most ways that we tend to divide writers, people generally fall somewhere on the spectrum between the two extremes of being either an overwriter or an underwriter. As we'll talk about later on, you shouldn't be concerned about which of the two camps you fall into, but recognizing where you fall on the spectrum between underwriting and overwriting can help inform you about the possible flaws in your writing and give you a path to fixing them. So with that, let's talk about the differences between overwriters and underwriters, how you can tell which of the two you are, and ways that both sides can improve. So what's the difference between overwriters and underwriters? Basically, one group tends to write too much and the other group doesn't write enough. Can you tell which is which? Overwriters tend to write too much. This can either be at the prose level where they will tend to have wordier, longer sentences than they maybe should, or it can be at the scene level where they may spend too much time on things like physical descriptions or dialogue. The plot of a first draft of an overwriter may also meander and diverge with all kinds of different subplots or story threads not related to the main plot. On the other hand, underwriters generally only include the bare bones of a story the first time around, likely focusing on getting the main plot points down and little else. An underwriter is likely going to have sparser physical descriptions, possibly more terse dialogue, and the overall pace of the story will probably seem faster. In all likelihood, it will actually move too fast. So basically an overwriter overwrites and an underwriter under rights. That was a useless sentence. Moving on. How can you tell which one you are? There is actually a test to determine if you're an overwriter or an underwriter, although it's pretty invasive. It involves reading their first draft before they've had a chance to edit it. I, for one, can't imagine a more wanton breach of one's privacy. In all seriousness, though, I'm guessing you already have at least an idea of what camp you fall into. There is also the possibility that you could fall into either category depending on what part of your writing we're talking about. You might, for example, go too lean on your physical descriptions, but way overwrite your dialogue. Or maybe your overall story is underwritten, but at the sentence level your prose is a little wordy. There's a lot of different places on the spectrum where you can fall, and placing yourself isn't really important. What's important is knowing your tendencies and how they impact your writing. Depending on your tendencies, there will likely be parts of your work that you need to trim down, or possibly beef up. The parts that you need to trim down generally tend to be the parts that you most enjoy writing, and the parts that need to be beefed up are generally the things that you enjoy less. The best way to figure out what these places are is through the revision process, and likely by getting feedback on your work. Your editor, critique partners, and beta readers will likely be able to tell you where you need a little less and where you need a little more. So like always, feedback is a good way to help you figure out where you need to improve. That's kind of the, the, the point of feedback to, to improve things. Which ties nicely to the last point. So you've figured out if you're a page count murdering overwriter or an ink saving underwriter, now what do you do? The fact of the matter is that both underwriters and overwriters have flaws in their work that they need to correct. What those flaws are and how you go about correcting them is of course going to be different. The interesting thing here though is that both groups need to move towards the same goal. If you read a fully edited manuscript from someone with a reasonable amount of skill, you probably won't be able to tell what camp they fall into because the work will be edited in such a way that it falls into a nice middle ground between the too terseness of an underwriter and the overly wordy ramblings of an overwriter. Man, I really hope I've been saying overwriter and underwriter at the correct times throughout this video. Neither side produces something that is better or worse than the other, just something that is flawed in different ways. 
The end goal should always be to create work with the correct pacing, length, and with prose that flows nicely and is neither too succinct or too drawn out. Finding this middle ground is the tricky part, and the first step in getting there is understanding where you happen to be. If you're an underwriter, you shouldn't try to switch to becoming an overwriter and vice versa. There's nothing inherently better about either approach. But I think there is an argument to take parts of your writing that you know you tend to over or underwrite and try to move them towards that middle ground. For example, say that you never include enough detail in your physical descriptions of characters or setting. I'm not talking about any specific person here. You could make a conscious effort to put more detail in and address this problem if it was something that you know you need to actively improve in your writing. But do so with the intention of moving towards that nice middle ground, not trying to switch from being an underwriter to an overwriter. Because as I said before, neither of the two is better than the other, they are both flawed and get made better through editing. Which again, we're, we're gonna talk about in the coming weeks. So there you have it. I hope you found the advice in this video useful and of a good length. If you wanna see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.